Yeah. So today's topic is all about the bulk update using the SharePoint framework command sets, and uh, we are basically focusing more onto the multiple lookup column values using the command sets, which is really a tough thing to do in SharePoint. So that's the main topic about. Let me uh, before going deep inside of the topic. Let me brief about myself. So myself Subit Jaron. I'm the lead developer of modern workplace for Avanard. Mostly I focus on the internet portals and uh, the cloud-based applications all around the M3 applications and currently located into Frankfurt, Germany. And these are my social platforms where you can find me. And here we go. So, uh, so uh, just jumping into the problem statement. So where we observe this, so uh, seeing into the real business scenarios, we saw like there, there are many, uh, there's no simplified way or the out-of-the-box way to update the SharePoint metadata columns values for the selected documents or all the documents for the list and libraries. Basically, we have seen for this document libraries where the users or the experienced users wants to bulk update the metadata and there's no easy way to do. And this is not just about the lookup column, which we are focusing in this session, but it could be with any kind of complex columns that you may be encountering, like management data columns, lookup columns, multi-choice columns, taxonomy fields, which is as just mentioned. So it could be any fields that we can use in the shape and forms for the list and libraries. And the main uh, agony part for this is like, if the lookup list crosses the threshold limit, then it's really a pain to uh, add the data or the update the data using the out of the box form or the edit uh, grid view mode. So it's really, really tough that, that we have encountered in the real business scenarios. So yeah, that's uh, from where the problem comes. And let's see what are the out of the box available options. So mostly all the native users use the out of the box edit forms to plug in all the information. If you see there are, there are materials, they are uh, standard material. So in this case, I'm uh, basically using this hypothetical scenario of industries mapping their materials. And on the right side, if you see, this is like the advanced users using the edit group functionality where you can do a bulk edit of the documents in a single shot. So this works, uh, but uh, it depends like on the scenario. If it's a like a lookup list has crossed the threshold, it's really a, a pain to do this exercise. But if it's a normal list, it works smoothly. So yeah, uh, let's see now the solution architect, like what we have brought to uh, come out of this problem. Uh, so this this has like a, needs a user input basically. So it can be in any form. Like right now, I'm taking as a input in the text form, but it can be a upload a CSV file or any text file where the user provides the values. And for this scenario, I'm taking the lookup example. It could be the management data, people, multi-choice, or any taxonomy fields type of column, where this data is pushed to the SharePoint uh, list view command set where all the heavy lifting things happens, where we are checking the business logic, doing the data sanitization, all kind of validations that the business needs. And then finally, if, if you have the valid content, we try to push the data to the SharePoint. If it's the invalid content, we try to inform the users that it's not uh, valid. So it, it just uh, gives a message like it's, it's not able to update the data because it's kind of invalid data. So this will be our architect solutions to come out of this problem. And just, uh, just a, a brief uh, information about the command set, where we can use it, how can we leverage this uh, command set extension. So it's basically to plug in your client side code uh, to inject any custom side uh, business uh, processes or requirements to suffice your requirements. Also works on the business requirement uh, with the custom commands to be developed, like you can do lots of stuff using this command sets. Uh, and the yeah, main main focus point is like if you want to have it at the tenant level, yeah, it's quite easily available. If you just want to focus on a particular site collections, that too an option is available. So yeah, it's available based on your needs. Another thing is like yeah, the, uh, we have our choices like where we want to see these command set buttons. Usually, mostly people prefer at the command bar at the top of the SharePoint list view or and some people do like to use it for particular like few items they can use in the context menu also 
so yeah we have few options to choose but uh, mostly in this uh, demo i'm going to show a case in both the cases so yeah so i think it's uh, yeah time to jump into the live demo and let me sh sh yeah shift to my application so this is my sharepoint application where i've tried to yeah create a scenario uh, having the uh, documents. Uh, it's just like industry documents. I've prepared a scenario where uh, these are mapped to the materials. So I've created three different lists to, to showcase the like what are the pain points having this lookup list. So this is the material list which is tied to my custom solution, spfix command buttons. And this is the, the other list where I see the threshold list, like it's already cost some 10,000 items. So let's see how it behaves in all forms and this is a normal list which few materials just to see how it works with the normal scenario so uh, as you see like preferred way the end users comes to this uh, tries to fill in some information test uh, just let's give us something test uh, this is the one which is like bind up with my custom solution but if you see this is also i've just taken a scenario it has crossed the threshold limit of 5000 items so if you see, you have to scroll up, so it loads some bunch of items at the first thing. But if I, for example, if I want to search in for the last item, it takes its own time, and yeah, it's a process that you need to follow to if you're doing in that manner. And yeah, this is yeah. If you see, it takes some time. It's try to find the item and then finally loads it. So this is the like out of the box way. It takes its own time, depending on the data. If it's like simple data, for example, this case is just adds it easily but if you see here this is yeah this stays at all for you like it's already crossed the threshold limit so this is the yeah the normal way that mostly people use the other ways like yeah the advanced way where we use the edit uh, grid view yeah uh, so here also i just want to show you like if you see here it works normally for the normal lookup list where we have few data items to be selected but the problem comes once once we try to use the threshold li li limit so it's, uh, it doesn't try to like if, if you try to drag and drop also it's, it gives tries to give you an error but it works normally for the normal uh lookup list with having a few items so this is like really a, a pain uh, point for the clients and uh, we thought about like let's see what are the solution and the best solution that came to us like let's leverage uh, the command set extension so what i tried to do is basically plugged in our button basically this is the button which is available on it can be used for all the items like for example if i click on this you enter the item and it will be doing its job for all the items or i can do it for particular folders with few items so depends on the choice like uh, how we want to do it we have the option so let's do it a quick check for example let's do it for all the items i'll just try to but get grab some valid items first just to showcase the positive scenario so this is if you see these are the materials which is already present let me show you yeah these are the materials that is already present in the list let's see so here first step is like we are doing the process check validating the items whether it's there or not it says like it's are available and if i click on this button it, it will try to push all those items uh, keep uh, keeping in mind like it depends on the number of items files and the things that we're talking about it takes that amount of time so but it usually takes fraction of time and it's fast to uh, be seen in the ui but sometimes depending on the, if you're processing for like thousands of documents, you have to do a hard refresh to be seen into the screen. But usually it uh, takes a couple of seconds to work out. I've done a few other scenarios just to check whether there are documents or not. So it's it checks for everything. If there are empty uh, documents folders, it will give you a different type of scenario. So this is one of the scenarios valid. Let's check for the mixed scenario where we have some valid as well as invalid material and let's try to do it for a particular folder and particular file just to see how it behaves and here it goes so in this scenario i'm validating the material so if you see these are the valid material presented that's a lookup list and these are the invalid material so it can happen like someone's trying to pull in the data from somewhere and it could be outdated data or somewhere so it will be checked before it tries to update the system and here the end users will be notified yeah these are the invalid material won't be processed won't be updated for the items but this uh, this one will be done and if i click on update there should be a message and usually 
it takes some fraction of a second, but uh, best is to do a hard refresh. And if you see, it tries to update the data for all the items, the selected items. And the, uh, the last scenario is where is like uh, the simple one, where if someone tries to play around with the system, try to push with the wrong data, it will clearly say like, yeah, it, it doesn't meet the requirements and it's not available in the system. So basically, this is the one and covering all the scenarios. And I just want to showcase like we have plugged in in all the, so you can find it, you can do it this way also. User has a choice, you can do it for that also. Uh, you can do it for particular, like if I just want to do it, so it's uh, it works for the multi-level also, nth level, like if I go to deep inside, I just want to do for this one, or I just find it, I need to do it for particular countries, I can do the selection within all the doc documents presented to the folders would be updated with this value, so. This is the thing and it works for the threshold limit. What I have tested basically is I've done the regression testing for like if it has, if the document library itself crosses the threshold limit, it's, it, this, this process still works. If the lookup list across the threshold limits, it still works. So I think uh, this is uh, one of the solutions that we came up looking all the business scenarios that people are facing with the lookup list. So this is one of the example for lookup list, but it, it happens usually for the all the complex types of uh, columns and share points. And here I think the demo part is over. Let me jump back to my presentation and coming to the full mode. So know about like uh, this is just uh, just just to update you like I'm currently working on this feature to enhance it further. So it so this feature can be enhanced further to using the upload CSV. So no more text box, no more entering of the uh, the materials or any kind of stuff that you want to update. You can upload it from the CSV file or text file or any file. So this is also possible. You just take it from somewhere and tries to update the items in one shot. And yeah, uh, it's, this is the business logic. Yeah, we can do for mother uh, like furthermore, whatever we want to do for the, as part of the pro process checks. This is quite possible. And I've also tested for this, can, can we work for single value? So my scenario was basic for multiple lookup values. It can be for the single lookup value, single people field, or multiple choice fields. It can be uh, done for any scenarios that we uh, we can have in the SharePoint. So it's a good thing to have. Another thing is that it can be plugged to any list and libraries. For my case, I've just, uh, uh, I'm checking the my logic checks. It's It just works for documentary, but it can be done for any multiple list and multiple libraries so it works for everything and this uh, yeah this uh, this thing uh, works for the other complex types of columns namely management data columns multi choice columns and other uh, complex type of column effortlessly so yeah the, this is the thing that we have noticed it works uh, really well and uh, before I jump it, I think let me uh, show you uh, the source code itself just to see uh, what we have done with the with the solution. So solution part, it comes. Uh, this is my dialog box that you see uh, once you click on the command button. This is the front end of that dialog box where we have some control text area label uh, buttons uh, just to see and yeah, some some parameters where we pass in the data. Let's come to the main part where I'm doing the heavy lifting part where we do the log, uh, logic things. And so this is like, or the scenario where I'm checking for the external users, I'm checking for the permissions, I'm checking for the library. Like if it's matched the library name, then only it shows the button. It won't be available for all the listing libraries. It will be dedicated to particular listing libraries. This is my valid, valid scenario where I just uh, do the REST API calls. So basically, in, behind the scenes, it's calling the REST API just to check whether the the item or the material that is is already there in the uh, lookup list or not. If not, it uh, tries to refine the data. And this is by execute button where I check for all the scenarios, like whether it's uh, the selected option. Selected option is the easy option, but if it's like a you do just just click the bulk update. It takes all the IDs, all the documents in one shot and tries to update for all. So this is a simple scenario where we have the ID, we, we get it from the events, but this scenario where we takes, if you don't do the selection or if you do the selection, it takes all the IDs and tries to do the update for all the each and every items. And depending on the number of items, uh, it takes the time. So, but I've seen like within seconds, it tries to update all kind of metadata. 
And quickly navigating to the, this is the way I'm trying to get in the, all the nested IDs. So it works for the nth level that I mentioned. It could be at any level, at any number of documents. So it works everything. I'm trying to retrieve some properties just to see if you do can, if you can do some like filtering with the logic or something we want to do for some particular files or some other files. And this is the main call that, uh, that does this magic. So I've already given the reference. So this is the thing where we are trying to make a batch request. So this is this all the items are updated in one shot. Like uh, it could be 100 items or 1000 items. All the items with all the lookup values or it could be any values that we have pushed in updates the updates the solution and uh, so this is the so we are using a batch call basically which i have provided the link and it works very well i've tested for i think thousand thousand and five thousand items it looks good it's super fast and it does its work on time also i've tested one of the scenarios that if the file is locked out it it uh, because if the file is locked out it won't update the metadata so we do inform the users like the files are locked out can't be done so that scenario also this is all about that one and yeah sharepoint services just want to yeah, tell you about the rich uh, so i'm checking for the lookup values basically it could be any other values but it does that part it checks for everything and yeah it, it takes it, it takes takes in account of 500 because uh, that's a threshold for the lookup or any complex values but it takes and it brings up the data in a good uh, good amount of time and this is the retrieve file properties. Yeah, this is uh, for my use case where I'm trying to get some more information about the documents. And yeah, and jumping back to the slides again. So yeah, references I have uh, used uh, this uh, build your first list view command set. I think this is the good starting point if someone is looking to build command set buttons. And basically, it's used for like if you want to do it the action for the multiple selections or all the selections. So. We have some uh, solutions from the Power Platform, Power Automate, but that does just work for the select item. But command set button works for everything. Like if you want to do some bulk uh, bulk things, please uh, use the command sets. Uh, make batch request. This is the important one which I have tested. This is the classic way where, yeah, mostly the SPFX PNP SPFX uses the REST APIs <coughs> to update the, the samples, and the last one is the GitHub samples where you can find more solutions related to command set. Mm -hmm.